On this installment of And Just Like Ass, Carrie wears a giant tortilla chip on her head. Nice hat. Then she has a chance encounter with Lance Armstrong. Steve returns. Hey. Hey. Charlotte becomes a stage mom. Miranda continues simping. And Che gets ratioed by a focus group. Miranda's manic episode continues as she navigates life during divorce. She wakes up to a shirtless Steve taking out all of his anger on a newly acquired punching bag, pretending it's Miranda's head. Ron Weasley, who was literally just snot bubble crying on the phone to his mommy in Amsterdam, has gone right back to being an insufferable little shit. Do those headphones work? Obviously not if I can hear you. So Miranda's only respite comes in the form of a text message from her stupid they them friend. But her joy is sucked away when the family convenes for therapy. Oh, uh, it's kind of off topic, but I'm not gonna start college in the fall. Brady announces that he wants to skip college and stay home for a few years so he can keep sleeping in and have his mom pick up his used items. Miranda, the lawyer, has completely lost her voice and is pretending to be okay with everything amid upending her entire family for a person who didn't even disclose their marital status. How do you know Che? We were married, technically still hard. <laughs> mom. Mom. This is not who she is, just so you know. See, even his annoying ass knows what Miranda has become. An overly apologetic, voiceless dunce trying to bend and contort herself to be whatever Che wants, and it's so sad to watch. Here she is, apologizing for her alarm going off. I heard it. I'm sorry. I didn't go to sleep till four. Hey. For bumping into an oddly placed chair. Oh, oh my, sorry. For saying eat sh too many times. They can eat shit too then. Eat shit and Stop telling everybody to eat shit. It's not helping. Sorry. Carrie accompanies Miranda to Che's new apartment because apparently they can afford a super nice luxury apartment after filming one pilot for a future me TV show that will more than likely require a laugh track. But first, surprise. Oh, hi. I didn't know you'd still be here. I'll be sleeping on the couch. Later, Carrie, Che, Lyle, and Miranda are in the bedroom discussing the impulsive marriage of Lyle and Che. We were married in Vegas <laughs> by an Elvis impersonator. <laughs> oh, Both of us dressed as Elvis. Janie was dressed as Priscilla. Sounds like D-Rugs to me. Then Che's stupid show gets rejected by a focus group. More on that later. It sucked. And Miranda is haplessly trying to be Che's cheerleader, but it doesn't work. You just have to pull yourself out of this. I'll be your cheerleader. Miranda, stop. Let's go. Miranda, stop. stop. Let's go. Stop. Would you mind staying the night at your other place? Oh, sure. So I'll see you tomorrow. You know, honestly, I think I just, I think I just need a few more days alone. Miranda, I really hope it was worth it. So while Carrie is out and about actually listening to someone else's problems for a change, she holds up traffic in the bike lane and ends up causing a biker to eat it. <laughs> Sorry, Seema. Guess you're gonna have to table Austin Powers for another day. Or forever. Oh my God, I have to, I have to go. Listen, I gotta go, okay? I oh, I gotta go. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Lance Armstrong endures Carrie's rambling for a few minutes, so it's obvious he finds her attractive. Can I take you to an urgent care? <laughs> Would you please, can I, can I please take you to the urgent care? All right, yeah, because my wrist is really starting to pound. No, I'm talking to you! Oh, Here, nearest hospital. Caroline, who just donated thousands of dollars to Enid's Old Lady magazine, doesn't bother to even offer covering Lance's medical bill. Sir, the card you gave us earlier to put on file was declined. So instead, thinking he's poor because his card was declined, she brings him a whole bunch of soup and offers to help him work on his project. Uh, so I assume you are proficient in Python? Once she realizes he's rich, Carrie decides to stay over and then they end up making out. Do you live here? I live here. Well, this, it's impressive. Uh, we've sold three apps. Carrie 
Cherie is not dumb. She stays chasing the bag. They're interrupted by Lance's business partner, and now I'm getting super strong Banky and Holden vibes from chasing Amy. Dude, fucking hang a towel on the door if you got company. What the fuck is going on here? Put this sure. Here. Are you with her right now? Yeah, I'm... Seriously, dude? <laughs> Carrie's over it, so she dips, setting her up to spin the block for the fourth time with her favorite fool. By the way, I made a video about this. You should watch it. Aiden, I slept with my ex-boyfriend. I'm not ready for marriage. I'm not ready to be a stepmother. Between Brady and Steve being unable to crack eggs, put bacon in a skillet, and put bread in a toaster. Mom, I told you you don't have to come all the way over here every morning just to make me breakfast. The two of you would starve if I didn't. Lance Armstrong answering the phone for another man while pre-coitus, and Seema's hypocritical two-night stand introducing an inflatable to the bedroom. The men are still completely useless. Miranda walk of shames at home from her emotionally abusive they them friend to wake up her grown ass son. Does he not have a phone with an alarm? Between this and the littering of used condoms, Louisa probably left him because she was sick of being his mommy. I mean, surely you were tracking the RSVPs, right? On the paperless post? I think so. Um, I never hit send. You had one job, Herb. One job. Wow. Oh my God, I forgot to order the cake. They have food for 31 people to go around. So by the time they're done with all the oysters, lobsters, and hors d'oeuvres, I'm sure they wouldn't have room for cake anyways. Lisa abruptly announces that her dumbass husband is running for city comptroller, which he actually agrees to do. Herbert is running for city comptroller. I am? At the Halloween bash, he's so concerned about the job his wife made him do that he uses it as an excuse to be a wet blanket about her dancing with Anthony. Also, not great press optics, you dirty dancing with the devil. He knew the left eye, the T-Boss, and the chili parts verbatim. Bruh, it is really not that serious. Wait, what did Lisa just say? He knew the left eye, the T-Boss, and the chili parts verbatim. At this same Halloween party, Naya, who looks absolutely stunning as Catwoman, is pissed that there is no single men around. Then Seema, who finally gets to do something other than be Carrie's assistant. Let me call my cousin's office and get you an appointment later today. It's already done. I listed you on three different sites. You need this for your book sales. No, it's not an emergency, but she does need to be seen immediately. Don't get in any photo near women with walkers. That'd be a brand killer for you. I can have a crew here to take care of that tomorrow. I should hire you to be in charge of my entire life. Offers to take her and Carrie to a rich guy hotel. They go and Seema and Naya immediately get chatted up. Seema's guy lets her know that he has ED and decides to, right there in front of her, start inflating his tire. <laughs> this same guy will later throw a hissy fit after discovering Seema's vibrating friend. Not cool. We had B plus sex. Okay, I guess that's now F plus sex. Seriously? While their kids are off at summer camp, Charlotte and Harry utilize their bratless time by engaging in copious amounts of fully clothed woohoo. It is here that Charlotte once again is dealing with a penis emergency. Where is it? Carrie, who put a bunch of people out of work for not saying a word that rhymes with shmushmina, is freely and repeatedly saying another word that rhymes with fizz. But to me, G what? G what? G what? is like an old friend that gets on your nerves. Charlotte gets to work on Harry's woohoo <laughs> woo issue. I do three sets of 10, three times a day, so you can suck it up. Kegel exercises, all you have to do to stay tight is to tighten and release it for 10 minutes a day. The Rock, who has never showed an interest in modeling, suddenly wants to model for Ralph Lauren after being approached by some creep at the park. I was at the park and I landed in Aldi and this cool guy came up to me and wanted to know if I ever thought about model. This is Ralph Lauren. Harry's not on board. Teen model, next stop rehab. Because Charlotte desperately wants at least one of her children to be an extension of her, she throws herself behind Rock's modeling since she also used to model for Ralph Lauren. Hi, I'm Charlotte. Are you wearing all vintage Ralph? Head to toe. I've been wearing him since I was a teen. 
model. I was a teen model when the Ralph Lauren store opened in New Haven. Although Harry still objects, Charlotte is supervising at the end of the day, so Harry drops it. Besides, as long as she doesn't let Rock go to Jack Nicholson's house alone, everything should be okay. I think Enid is still salty that Carrie snagged Alexander Petrovsky because she is a complete and total bitch to Carrie this whole episode. Well, Carrie, why aren't I with him? Because I am. While Carrie was waiting for her POC emotional support friend, child wrist, I mean, Jackie, to come back after getting the shits, she spots Enid, who was trying her hardest to ignore her at first. What are you reading, something wonderful? It's my new book. If you ever felt inclined, you know, to mention the book and asking it. If I mentioned your book, I would have to mention everyone's book. Does everyone have a book? Well, I don't. <laughs> Enid declines and then immediately pitches Carrie on her own project, an old lady magazine. I'm launching an online magazine focused on women our age. Oh, no. Jackie is still in the bathroom, so Carrie returns to her other POC emotional support friend, Seema, to whine about her non-problem of being compared to an elderly woman. Do I present as a 75-year-old retiree? Be honest. All while wearing an elderly lady outfit. Carrie, you're an old fart. Just embrace it. Carrie eventually decides to use the old lady magazine launch party as a chance to network and possibly write for Ask Enid. Bitsy and her shoulder pads are here as well. Carrie runs into Enid and says she wants to write for the Old Lady magazine, but I, I would be honored to write for Vivant. I don't want you to write a thousand words. I want you to give a hundred thousand dollars. Due to tragic circumstances, your pockets recently got deeper, so. Meanwhile, I bet Carrie still owes Charlotte 30 grand. Char, take notes. No, but seriously, Enid was way out of line here. So instead of just knocking her the fuck out at her own launch party, no less, Carrie claps back instead. If I gave you $100,000, I'd have to give everyone $100,000. <laughs> gotcha, bitch. Luckily, all the awkwardness is dashed away once Carrie makes a donation so she can write for her old lady magazine. See, money solves everything. Unless, of course, you're Lisa's mean-ass stepmother. Oh, do I not exist? I've been here since 7.15 and not so much as an hors d'oeuvre. You've approached me with that same hors d'oeuvre for the second time. This was the only seat without the air conditioning blasting on it. Wow. Oh my God, I forgot to order the cake. You forgot to order the cake? You forgot to order the cake. Shall I tell you why I never forgot to order the cake? Because... Sit down and shut up. Move out of that seat and I'll split your lip. Because Che lives in an alternate dimension where they're booked and busy, ABC, yes, ABC, is interested in Che Pasa. Instead of stacking their coins in case the pilot doesn't get picked up or at least doing content on the side, they spend their evenings smoking and playing video games with their fellow stoners who are most likely half their age. Luckily, the writers have actually been listening to their pleb fans' criticism and finally inject some reality into the show when Che gets roasted, dragged, bagged, and tagged by the focus group. The whole Che character was like a walking boomer joke that felt so fake to me. Just some bullshit version of what the non-binary experience is. It sucked. Also, they would not be able to afford an apartment that big in Bushwick. Anyone else have anything negative to say about the character of Che, played by Che Diaz? Okay, looks like we got a Yahtzee. They would not be able to afford an apartment that big. Che is at home cosplaying Snoop Dogg, they're so depressed. They would not be able to afford an apartment that big. How am I gonna afford this apartment? <laughs> I knew they couldn't afford this apartment. It has floor to ceiling windows. They better hop on OnlyFans in the meantime because that apartment looks like it's at least six to ten million dollars a month. Che shoes Miranda away in what appears to be a soft launch into an eventual breakup. Would you mind staying the night at your other place? Oh, sure. So I'll see you tomorrow. You know, honestly, I think I just I think I just need a few more days alone. Y'all, I actually didn't hate this episode, so I'm sure I'm gonna be let down tremendously in the next one. Stay tuned.